What is up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Kenny, aka Tex3S. We're just gonna get right into the video. Today we are going to be upgrading my LED turn signals on the mirror. So if you don't know our vehicle, Lexus 3 IS, they have these turn signals inside of the mirror that are already LED from the factory. The factory ones are a clear lens and they blink on and off constantly. The ones I have currently on right now are the sequential ones. So they're just smooth action, one color amber right now. As you can see, every time you lock and unlock the vehicle or signal, it's going to do that animation. There is another version of these LED signals. It's Ray's RCF actually provided me with some. Thank you for sponsoring this video also, Ray. We have these different model ones here. These have the frosted LED lens inside and the clear lens outer side. They have this many wires for a specific reason because it has many, many functions. This specific model can blink on and off, on and off without the sequential mode, just like the OEM one. It has a sequential mode that you can make it sequential amber. Then it has a DRL mode, which turns white whenever you're not operating the signal. So it's pretty much a switchback LED. And when it's static, it just stays on while you're in drive or whenever the lights are on. Also, it has a, another puddle light on the bottom here. So I know that one underneath there is not enough. So this actually will help because there's four diodes. Whenever you wire up the static white DRL on also, it'll actually have a dancing animation mode at startup. So yeah. Let's install this and I'll show you what it looks like. Before we get any further into the video, Ray actually sent me this other module here. It's a strobe fresh strobe module for your third brake light. Pretty much makes your brake light flash and then steady on. Usually they're like three hyper flashes, three slow flashes, and then a steady on. Sometimes it's four. Originally you would have to splice these into your third brake light or whatever light that you want to flash. I know some cars do their actual tail lights on the outside or the F1 light on the bottom diffuser like when I had the Lexon diffuser. But yeah, Ray now carries this and this makes it so much easier because it's straight direct plug and play. I mean, it, it makes no sense to mess this up at all. So let's install this real quick and show you how easy it is. It literally takes a minute. <laughs> So coming to the back seat, directly behind the middle seat is the third brake light, which is up here. You can um, just pry it up with your hands, or if you want to use the plastic pry tool that I always show in my video, you can use that also just for more leverage because space back here is very limited. So um, yeah, let's just get started with it. You can obviously just shove the plastic pry tool up around there, pry up on the corners, both sides. Once you get the tabs out from the corners, you pretty much just want to turn it around because it'll be easier to work with. You'll see a uh, push connector right here. You'll just push the bottom tab in and then pull it directly out. Just like that. The connector is out. Now we can get the new module that Ray sells. Clearly there's uh, only one way in and one way out. So there's a male and a female. I'll just merge them together. Uh, it only goes one way. You'll hear it click. Clicking there. And then clicking in inside this light. We have it plugged in. We can tuck it away neatly. So this just slides in there. This module and connector can fit right there. And push the clips down like so. It's literally as simple as that. Installing this actually enhances the safety of your vehicle and for the people behind you. I think especially if you live in cities that have a lot of traffic, a lot of population, a lot of vehicles on the road, you just never know when somebody's not paying attention and that's definitely gonna catch their attention. Works flawlessly, simple, plug and play, very affordable. Link in the description, hit up Ray on Instagram if you want to purchase it also. Now we can jump into the mirror light install. Here are all the tools that we are going to be using. Um, we're gonna need to be using a Phillips screwdriver. So we're gonna need that for the mirror to disassemble it and the door panels to wire the daytime running light on the mirror light itself. Gonna need an X-Acto knife to uh, help splice some wires up. Also going to be needing a wire stripper tool 
and a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet set just to uh, remove the mirror so we could put one of the wires down into the window switch so that it can have the daytime running light function. But yeah, don't worry guys, this is a pretty simple install. Let me just give you a rundown on the wires on the lights also. So yeah, these lights clearly have a bunch of wires. Obviously these red and black wires are gonna be your positive and ground. This will give you power to turn on the signal. We have a connector here that we'll plug it into and it's directly plug and tape play, plug and play to the OEM connector for the lights. This green and black wire are basically the option to make the lights statically blinking fully or sequential. So if we have it together, it will not blink sequential. It'll blink on and off, on and off as a whole set. And if we have it disconnected and I, I would wrap electrical tape on here so it doesn't make any connections together, it would be sequential and doing the dance animation and all that. This black and white is also positive and negative. This will be tapped into the puddle light that's underneath the mirror. Whenever you walk up close to the car, it'll project a light on the floor. So yeah, this has an option for it. As I told you, there was the four LEDs on the backside here, so that'll add another additional puddle light function. And then we have this single blue wire here. This basically just taps straight into the window switch, I will show you which wire to tap. So it gives you the animation whenever you unlock the vehicle and it'll start the dance mode. And then that will also give you the function of leaving this a white running light. Hopefully that made sense. Let's plug everything in and show you all the features. To begin, we're gonna need to remove the lens itself. All we need to do is push in this side so we get leverage on this side. I like to hold just this corner right here and just pry it straight out and then it'll just come directly out. It's just clips behind here that's holding it in. Like so. And then there are going to be five Phillips screws here. They're all the same size so it doesn't matter which way it goes back. Once all five screws are out, we can separate this front black shroud from the mirror cap. So the back comes out easier and it comes out with the, the sequential light also. So just be careful with that. Let me just turn it for you guys to see like so. And usually the light is screwed into the mirror from here into the mirror, but I left mine without the screw. It stays in there pretty snug. It's fine. Um, and then this bottom black piece can separate from the mirror cap, so just be careful. I like to leave it as one piece and just set it aside. The OEM will be like this. It's just a uh, plug and play, so we just push this pin connector up here and then remove it. We do not need this one anymore. So this connector is also provided in the kit. We're just gonna plug it in. It only goes in one way. As you can see, there's a little notch right there, and then that goes right where the push tab is, right on top. Click it in. So basically the orientation is the black wire is going to the orange wire here and then the red wire is going to the pink wire here for signal. And then on this end is another push connector. So we just have to put these pins directly into there. It's as easy as matching the black and red from the light to this. So you just shove it into the pins there. So just to show you guys that it works, I'll be unlocking the vehicle to show you that the lights turn on and they do turn on so we are set to wire up the next wires we can pull apart our black and white wire here this wire and basically this will be tapped into our puddle light which is directly right here and that puddle light has power uh, cables that are both yellow one with a black stripe the one with the black stripe indicating that is the ground so we'll do the negative black to the one with the black stripe and then the white one to the yellow one. This wire is pretty thin so we're gonna have to splice it and wrap it around and then use electrical tape because I don't have any more T connectors at the moment. So what I am going to do is cut these ends off here. Expose some. I'm gonna use the first little notch there. Expose about like uh, half an inch or so 
just like that so some wire is exposed there and then on the black one also <clears throat> and now we're just going to twist these up so it has a solid connection to grab onto twist it up just pulled the light out um, if you haven't changed yours to LED the light bulb is in here you just switch it out the size is a t10 I have uh, bulbs from Oxido so if you uh, would like them I actually have a code it's can 15 for 15% 15 off your total purchase and I'll leave the link in the description below also so back to this I like to just cut the rubber part on the outside so we're just going to be slicing it back and forth all around and now we can bend it in half right where we cut it and you'll see the wire being exposed right there and you can also separate them by tugging them apart and you can see the whole thing is exposed all around basically now we're just going to be wrapping our wire right around the exposed part so it can grab some power out of it just make sure to wrap it up very tight coil now we can wrap our electric cape around there to make sure it's secure and that they won't touch each other so let's do the click and yeah they both work as you can see I just want to show you guys this before we move on because all we have left is this blue wire here and then the green and black wire here. If we leave these two separated, the black and the green wire here, it'll do the sequential dancing mode. If we connect them together, both of them touching like this and sealed up, it's going to blink as a whole. Now, I, I kind of don't see the point of that if you're buying these because it's basically the OEM one does that, but the OEM one is very dull and this is filled lighting, so it's up to you. I like to leave it disconnected, so I'll be wrapping these up individually and uh, just tucking this away. So for this portion, you will be needing the plastic pry tool, the 10 millimeter later on, and then the Phillips screwdriver. The first thing first we want to do is just take out all the plastic pieces that are in the way. So. There's one behind this release door lever here. There's another one in the handle right here. Door shadow light down here. You just use the plastic pry tool to get in there and just pry the corners out, basically. And then uh, just like the rear lights, there is a push pin release. Release the light. And yeah, now we just remove all the Phillips screws. So there's two in this handle right here, one in this release handle right here, and then another one where this rubber guard is. Also can't forget that we have to remove the uh, window trim. So you can pry back here or pry from the front with your fingers. It's doable. Just pull straight up. And there is a connector here. You just push on the tab just to release it like that. This is the wire that we're going to be tapping to so just uh, keep an eye out for it. Uh, the next step to remove this door panel is just plastic tabs all around. So I like to grab it from the bottom, push the door away from you, pull the door card towards you. There is tabs like a, in a U shape here. So once you get it out from the bottom, you can just lift it straight up and let it rest. To remove the mirror, there are three nuts directly through these holes right here. So we're gonna have to remove this. Just stick it next to there. There are gonna be two inside of this hole right here and then one this way so just be careful because it can fall all the way down and reach in from the top there just to get it out the second one here third one there our mirror can come just straight out and we can fish our wire through we could actually remove this plastic too and make it less of a hassle it just come straight out like this now, uh, before I let it rest on the vehicle, I like to put a microfiber directly under it. So I'll just set it right here. I'm gonna lift this straight up. Pull some slack out. And then now we could rest the mirror there. 
We just have to fish this wire straight through down this lane so we can come out here and then we could get it through the door card to tap into the mirror. Uh, what I will be using is a hanger and I'll just wrap electro tape around here just to shove it through and then retrieve it from the other end. I have my hanger here. We're just going to be wrapping the end like this uh, with electrical tape. You can see this where all the wires are traveling through. We're just going to shove it through. It's going to poke through the rubber grommet, whatever gasket there. And we'll retrieve the wire from that end. As you can see, it is poking out right here. So yeah, just remove the tape to hang on to the wire here as you're pulling out the hanger. The wire is through. Now we're just gonna shove the wire straight down in there and then we can retrieve it. Now we can put the, the mirror back into its holes. Just to be safe and the mirror won't fall, I will be reassembling or retightening down the the mirror onto the door again. If you look through this crack up here, you will see the blue wire sticking out. We can uh, fish it through this hole right here, as you can see. All right. As soon as we get this blue wire here, we are actually going to feed it down into this piece right here because we just pull this straight out. The window railing is actually in the way, so as soon as you roll the window up, this will actually pull the wire straight up. So we're just going to um, push this back in and reach for it down here. We're going to go in front of the railing, which is the silver piece here. So yeah, just like this, uh, right behind this plastic piece, so that it's um, in front of the railing right there, so it won't get caught on the window. And we can just simply snap this back into place, and our wire is coming right out of there. And that wire is tapped into the thicker green wire on the window switch here. Basically, whenever you turn on and off the lights or unlock your car, it will stack them, make them go away, and then put the DRL on. As easy as that guys, everything is reassembled as you can see, you can uh, unlock it there, everything works, the bottom projector lights, the DRL, the sequentials, well those are some pretty cheap, simple mods that can make your car visually better from the outside. Not only aesthetically, but it actually enhances safety also from the side and the rear. A huge shout out to Ray for sending me that. If you have any questions, if you want to purchase anything, feel free to message him on Instagram. It's Ray's RCF. You can also head to his store, his online store. He also sells all these products. He's going to be sending me some ghost shadow lights also. He just didn't have the ones that I wanted in stock at the moment, but that was just pretty easy. It's just plug and play with the release tab, as you can see, when I remove the door panel. I did the passenger side, but both sides are very identical. It's just the driver's side. The pin has a lot more cables because it has all the uh, window control panels or switches. So you'll still be tapping into the large green wire. That's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.